Christian Begeman is known as the Special Projects Coordinator for the marketing team at Midco, but he's also known nationally for capturing some of the grandest photos of the Midwest. Here's an exclusive look at his off-road adventures. It all starts with brief encounters, small moments that lead us to our callings in life. Those moments develop into interests and later into dreams that others help us process with encouragement. For Christian Begeman, it started at an early age in his hometown, Isabel, South Dakota. It was the experience of seeing a fall afternoon through the eye of a lens that sparked an initial interest. So my mom had a point and shoot camera and at one point she wanted to develop the film but there was still room left on the film and being the you know, prudent folks that we were, it's like, you better go fill out the role before we send this in. So me and my little brother, when I was fall, we went out to the creek and we took fall, what I thought were cool fall photos uh, of the color of the trees and uh, everybody seemed to like them. A collaboration of moments that led Christian to the art of capturing moments in the Midwest. Those Midwest moments started in the sports realm in a time where action shots taken were few and far between. I played sports in high school and this was in the late 80s, early 90s and it was a, it was a big deal to see a picture of yourself playing sports. We had a weekly newspaper and of course, you know, whenever there was a, a sports photo, it was very rare, but it was really cool. Photos by their very nature freeze time. And if you can freeze a moment in time that shows a story or shows emotion or shows the passion that is involved with the athletes, I think that's what really speaks to me. Some of the best sports photos I've taken are the, the team on the bench cheering after a great play. It's not necessarily the great play, but it's that emotion, it's that story, that's what I like. Sports photography was how Christian practiced, how he refined his skills, and although capturing fast-paced competition remained one of his interests, there was always an internal pull to take his camera back outdoors. And when he decided to take his talents to the fields, that's when his work started to come alive to teach him about the world. I grew up on, out on a farm slash ranch, so I love being outside, I'm used to being outside. But just to get back out and get in touch with nature, was the first appeal. I'm the kind of guy that I want to know. If I take a picture of something, I'm not going to say, here's a photo, I hope you enjoy it. I want to tell a little bit about it. Okay, where it is, what's going on, what kind of flowers are in it, what kind of animal, what kind of bird. In doing so, I come across things that I didn't know about, but I had to, I, I learned about because I'm like, what am I taking a photo of? Is it rare? Is it, I've never seen this before. What is this? Christian's work first appeared online in the South Dakota Magazine's website as a monthly column. His images spoke and continue to speak to people's perception of the Midwest, whether it disproves rumors of boring back roads or reconnects adults to fond childhood memories. Feedback comes with every photo shared, but it's the personal motives that keep him inspired. Going out on photography shoots is kind of a release for me. It's a time to get away, a time to recharge. So if I'm at home on a rainy weekend, I'm like, I get antsy and I wanna, I wanna go out. But it kinda does depend on the weather. In the winter time, you can't go out as much because the daylight isn't as long. By four o'clock or 4.30, it's dark out. So in the winter time, it's every weekend if I can. In the summertime, the days are longer and it might be three, four times a week that I go out. National Geographic is renowned for incredible photos and inside stories. Those two elements alone caught Christian's eye early on, but nothing could have prepared him for the day that his work caught their attention. A photo taken in Wyoming was published in National Geographic's Daily Dozen in 2010. An abandoned house window looks out to unfathomable peaks, almost predicting Christian's future success with the publication. His dedication to continue his outdoor visits amplified and the back roads became more of a roofless sanctuary for him to explore. Those roads less traveled led to actual sanctuaries, which inspired a project and stretched his craft to new lengths. Things that I've also gotten into lately is uh, star photography, night astrophotography is what it's called. And that has to be in the middle of the night when it's pitch black out and no clouds. But it sounds like, well, you're kind of crazy for doing that. But if you've ever stood under a South Dakota sky away from the city at night, you don't know what I mean. It's really quite breathtaking. This photo actually was published in an online National Geographic column. It was shot up by Mud Butte, South Dakota. It's this little country church that I went up there specifically just to get the Milky Way above it. When I got there, someone had left the light on inside, which was a happy accident. And then I decided since I was there, I might as well shoot a sequence of photos and do a time lapse. Because another thing that I like to do on the video side is time lapse. So I shot over three hours of photos of the stars moving over the church. 
And then when I came back, I merged all the photos together into one a composite image and to show the star's movement. And in the middle, I showed just the core of the Milky Way and I submitted this to an assignment on Nat Geo called After Midnight and it was published. And it was, it was really interesting to see people from around the world commenting on it. His photography tells a story unique to every new viewer, but it also comes with stories that have already been written. I've almost stepped on rattlesnakes before. I've been very, probably too close to buffalo before. But, you know, I, I just think some of the better stories, even though this is my alone time and my time to be alone, some of the better stories are the people that you meet along the way. For instance, I remember taking a photo of a, a grand old church in Strandburg, South Dakota, and a 80-something-year-old gentleman from across the street came over and said, hey, what are you up to? And I told him, he's like, you want a tour? I got the key, let me go get it. So we had a nice 20-minute conversation. He told me about how the church was burned down at one time, and when he was a kid, he remembered them building it back up again. And, so it's just stuff like that where you kind of meet the people out there sometimes and that's the kind of stories that stick with you. Adventures await every dusty back road. It's seeking out new lighting after a storm. It's a hunt for the South Dakota pass flower before the dawn of spring. It's staying up all night to catch sight of the northern lights. It's his photography that makes you slow down and appreciate life that sometimes gets confused for the mundane. Although you think this line of photography is a slower pace antic for Christian than the sports photography he started out shooting, there's an art and an athletic skill that goes far beyond framing these picturesque scenes. You'd think it's a complete opposite, right? Sports, everything's moving fast. You have to understand the game, know where the ball's gonna be, you know, try to capture that emotion, that passion. And be on your toes, have a really fast camera. Um, and you know, nature, like, it doesn't happen as fast. But you'd be surprised how I've been more athletic getting nature shots than I ever have getting sports shots because there are times when the sunlight is changing and the cloud is moving just so, and you're like trying to get to the spot, you're trying to get to the spot where the rock is in the foreground or the, the windmill's in the foreground. And, and so I'm running while I'm adjusting my camera <laughs> and everything and I get there just in time and get the shot and then I'm like, yes. Like an artist waiting to be moved by their surroundings, so does Christian let desolate roads direct his work, the lighting, the weather, the season. That's what leads him every time he gets behind the wheel. We don't have the mountains, right? We don't have the ocean. But, but South Dakota in the Midwest has great skies, wide open vistas. And, and not only that, there's cool things to put in the foreground in front of them like barns or country churches or prairie windmills that I kind of like to, to use as perspective and to give that feel of farm country or the Midwest. And a lot of that stuff, when you're driving down the interstate at 80 miles an hour, you may not notice or it may go by so fast. But when you're back on the county roads, driving slow, driving 30, 40 miles an hour, and you stumble across these great scenes, to me, that's what makes South Dakota a great destination for folks. His photography attests that beauty can be found in a lifeless South Dakota winter, that skies are a form of artwork all their own, and that a soul can whisper from behind a lens, even from a lost, nameless road in the Midwest.